Globalization has allowed for the spread of customs, language, products, and has led to an easier way of life for many first world countries. See, there's a reason why I said globalization is good for certain countries, because the first world countries are the richest countries and they can take advantage of selling more products and goods and taking advantage of the workers that are in uh, third world countries, for example. In the next few minutes, you will learn all about the challenges a person faces due to globalization and how their culture is affected by the forces of globalization. Globalizing forces like trading has been a thing for thousands of years. Take for example the Inuit people who had lived in the eastern Arctic of North America. In their region, it was very difficult to acquire wood, which is an important resource for them to build shelter, provide heat, etc. So they traded soapstone, which was an abundant resource in the region used for carvings and sculptures, for wood with the aboriginal people who lived farther south. This is to show the importance of trading is key with the survival of the Inuit people. Similarly, our modern world has the same concept, but on a large scale. Transnational companies or multinational companies such as Walmart, Microsoft, Coca-Cola spread out their manufacturing plants in many parts of the world in order to mass produce their products to transport them all over the globe. Now these are just a few examples, but these inventions such as containers had led to faster transportation of goods in huge quantities, a term often referred to as containerization. Now all this might sound nice and dandy, but believe me there are side effects of globalization. First of all, let's start with trading. The growth of international trade is causing more countries to have income inequality because most of the profit is going to the transnational companies. This leaves the country with only the revenue they receive from the companies. Not only that, but because of trading, there has been an increase of cultural globalization. Cultural globalization refers to the transmission of ideas, meanings, and values around the world in such a way as to extend and intensify social relations. Due to trade, the world is now subjected to consuming similar goods such as food like chips, Coca-Cola, burgers, etc. Due to the wide availability of these foods, a person from a culture will resort to eating outside, meaning they will eat in a store or buy their food from a store rather than eating their cultural food that is cooked inside their home. This leads to less interest on cultural food, which is a form of homogenization by the outside world because of trading. Trading of clothing has also allowed many cultures to be homogenized due to the fact that people in a different culture will wear the same thing. Communication and media plays an important role on our generation today and impacts the way we dress today, which I'll talk about soon. These days, traditional clothing of a culture is often not visible by the younger generation. If I recall, I can only see my parents wearing our traditional clothing in the street. Another force of globalization that might affect someone's cultural identity is communication technology. Communication technology of the world in the past few decades has changed a lot. With the help of the internet, sharing information around the world is faster than ever before. In an age where all the kids look at their phones and computers, it is hard to imagine how much influence they're having through the internet, media, social media, and even more. When the French people met with the Aboriginals, they had offsprings that were half French and half Aboriginal. Thus was born the Métis, and this is an example of acculturation. It is a term we used when two different cultures come in contact with each other and learn to adapt with each other. The adapting part is known as accommodation, and this happened when the French and the Aboriginals' views and beliefs clash together, and they basically learn to adapt to each other and create what is known as Métis. So they're a whole different culture that was created with two cultures. We can sort of look at the internet the same way, whereas the internet consisting of many groups of people with different cultures, and they have met people with a single culture in our age and influenced our minds with their worldview. Thus, we are left with the conclusion that the internet and the media is largely responsible for impacting the worldview of people in today's world. Transportation technology is another huge part of globalization. It has been impacting cultures for a long time. And transportation technology has been improved after World War II, and it brought me to Canada in 2012. I'll be an example of this story. See, when I came to Canada, I was really confused with the world around me. Even though I knew how to speak English, it seemed like the culture is completely foreign to me. So to properly associate with my peers, I had to accommodate or adapt to their culture. 
which had a huge impact on my customs, traditions, technologies, values, beliefs, etc. All of a sudden, at home, I started talking to my parents in English, which my parents didn't respond to very well. Globalization played a major role in transitioning me from my country to Canada. Through media, my parents were influenced into thinking Canada was a good place to move. Also, the horrible environmental conditions caused due to transnational companies taking advantage of my country led me to moving here, and also many other factors. However, moving to Canada didn't completely take my culture away as I was able to meet many people similar to me and it helped me keep my identity. This is not always true because if a majority group from the same culture is dominant in one country and a minority person moves in, they will be forced to learn the ways of the dominant culture, a term often referred to as assimilation. A good example of assimilation is the Inuit people, and their official language is Inuktitut. So what happens is that the overwhelming force of the people speaking English in their community is forcing them to speak English, whereas they cannot speak their official language. So if they wanted to get involved with the community, they couldn't because the official language of English was English, and they were forced to speak English.